In all civilizations and across all cultures, water has occupied a significant place in mythology and spirituality. Water is spoken of as the source and the healer. Holy water offers protection, holy wells a source of pilgrimage. Water is the essence of all life. Its regenerative ability, its power to fertilize and bring about new birth is the pattern of life itself. It is considered sacred. Here we investigate our local water body, our sacred river, the River Shivan. The River Shivan has carved its way through the landscape for thousands of years, flowing through villages, bogs, wetlands, woodlands and meadows. It weaves its gentle way, often unseen and unnoticed, yet resilient and inspiring in its grace and endurance. The people and communities of this area are the caretakers of this precious jewel in our midst. It is a magical river with its waters and banks teeming with life. A series of streams coming from southeast of Glenamadi joined forces to create the River Shivan as it makes its way to the townland of Clunshivna. This is where we start our journey to explore and follow the flow as it meanders its way towards the wildfowl sanctuary of Mukana, where it joins the River Sock. So, hello, uh, my name is Connor Ruan. I'm a community water officer for Gola in South Scotland and I work with the local authorities water programme. We are a, a, an additional service to the county councils and we're here to help uh, communities in my role, help them uh, protect and restore water bodies. And we mean that by trying to protect the water quality and the health of a river body. Um, we've also a catchment assessment team which go out and carry out important uh, assessments on the rivers, lakes and different water bodies to understand what the pressures are on them. And I mean pressures as in the different things that are changing water quality and the nature of the catchment. So here by the Shivan River, it's a high status water body meaning that it is unpolluted and Cormac will talk a little bit more about what that means later on and the work that Law Pro is doing to try and retain those high status water bodies. So we're looking at the habitats and the species that are in the river and the importance of trees and trees are kind of ecological engineers for habitats. So there's many roles that trees will provide for biodiversity and habitats along a river. They provide homes and refuges for fish during high flows, for juvenile fish. When trees are in the river, they'll use them as a point to uh, shelter behind the high flows. Uh, for different stages of mayfly, when the mayfly is metabolising, it'll use the tree leaves to, to rest. Other things that trees will also kind of support are otters. So underneath exposed 
banks where trees might be, an otter might use it as, as a holt or its home. Uh, similarly, in the submerged roots, white crawled crayfish, a protected animal, um, will use the underside of the submerged roots as a refuge. So, and then they obviously protect a river. You know, a tree-lined riparian area is a good anchoring point. It solidifies a bank and prevents erosion. And it'll also prevent, you know, some runoff in certain scenarios of overland flow of pollutants and things like that. And in the river, a fallen tree is a very important thing because it can create clean graveled areas where the river slows down and it deposits its, gra its gravel. And it can create scour pools as well, diverting flows and uh, creating new habitats in, in the river channel. So um, I suppose water is important for all human life um, and you know we all rely on good quality water for you know our economy, you know manufacturing uh, relies on good quality water. You know our green image as a nation in terms of agriculture we need high, high quality water and the you know the, the changing of that kind of reduces our green image as a society you know so we're, we're very conscious that we're trying to improve things and we all need water as a drinking source as a thing for our life to exist but it's more than that it's a place that people go to have an amenity and some people see it as, as a spiritual thing and a place uh, that they can go to and switch off and enjoy nature so there's a huge amount of benefits to having a proper functioning catchment and rivers and water bodies uh, in our locality and the impact on those it's something that we're trying to change and something that we'd like to work with communities on because we all have to work together to improve the situation on the ground. So these cracks and crevices can be important um, roosting sites for bats that may use the, the bridge um, to take refuge in and uh, at night time they'll come out of these cracks or at dusk time they'll fly along the river and they'll use the river corridor to navigate bats use linear habitats to navigate and they'll feed upon the, um, the insects that might be on the surface of the water um, and they'll, they'll go back in again at uh, dawn and the bat that uses the, um, the river most often is I suppose is a Durbenton bat but you will get other bats um, such as pipistrels and sometimes lesser horseshoe as well that's um, known to use uh, riparian areas. <laughs>
The many wonderful bridges along its route were built from the 1820s to the 1840s, many with multiple arches showing great craftsmanship with locally cut stone. From Clunchivna Bridge on to Kingstown, Bohorbana, Summer Hill and on through Newbridge and beyond, the crossing of the bridges are a daily routine for many and often our only interaction with the river. Newbridge Tidy Towns erected an information sign with great detail about the river and its heritage, which can be viewed at the edge of the church car park across from the beautifully restored St. Patrick's Church. From picturesque Newbridge Village, we pass Kalyan Mountain Bridge and onto the sluice gates of the former Daly's Mill, one of a handful of mills which were powered by the river up to the 1950s. These mills, though hard work, were a great meeting place and they hold a special place in local memory. Kalyan Graveyard dates back over 800 years, containing not only ruins of a medieval church, but also those of an ancient nunnery. And on towards Rook Hill, where the Castle Gar River meets the Shivan near Clunabricka Mill. It was believed that you could find a cure for aching bones by walking out to the joining of the rivers on certain dates of the year. Hello, my name is Brian Reedy and I'm the Conservation Ranger for North Galway with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. Part of my job is implementing the Wildlife Act and the European uh, Birds and Habitats Regulations uh, on behalf of the Minister and the Department here in North Galway. The Shivan River here, part of it is an SPA, which is a special protected area and it's also designated as a natural heritage area. The Shivan is part of the North Shannon catchment and the Suck subcatchment. Part of my job is monitoring important habitats and species that are threatened. So the Shivan River has an amazing array of biodiversity, whether it's birds or insects or various flora. We have the kingfisher and protected species like the otter recorded on this stretch of river. There also are uh, nesting birds such as snipe and lapwing closer to the suck. So it's, a, it's an important habitat for some of the rarer birds. It provides water for us now, but equally has many other services for us. It protects us against pollution, climate change, it improves the soil fertility, it cleans our air. So there's many ecosystem services from the rivers in general for us. Well, it's a sure sign of a healthy environment when you see these hard ferns growing on the surface of a tree trunk. Uh, you've got the mosses, you've got the lichens as well, so the air quality is really good here. And epiphytes in general, it shows that they're growing on the surface, the tree hasn't been disturbed for a long time, and the habitat is in uh, a good condition. The Shivan started to become what we know of it today between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. The various glaciers and plateaus of ice began to melt 
and deposited material and fluvioglacial rivers began to form carrying that material and over time the patterns drained into a particular area and created the river as we know today. Rivers are connected to our daily lives and our local community and our local habitats are all interconnected. Clean, healthy river is not alone important for the animals and plants and the various biodiversity that I've spoken about earlier. It's also important for us. The river is our source of water and it's connected between the groundwater and various aquifers in the area that our drinking water is sourced from. So it's in our own interest to maintain our rivers in good health status and good quality. Ballinamore Bridge, with its nine arches, has an unusual screen wall with turrets at each end. The French family were the landlords of the area and it's said the screen was built to allow for privacy for swimming and recreation. Landlords like the Frenches, the Gerards, the Cheevers and others have left an indelible mark in the landscape and psyche of the area. Hello, uh, I'm Cormac McConaughey. I am the Blue Dot Scientist with the Local Authority Water Programme, or uh, LAWPRO. So you might wonder what a Blue Dot is uh, and why they're important. Well, under the Water Framework Directive, uh, which is a European directive around water quality, we have committed to prevent deterioration in our water quality, that it shouldn't get worse. And so rivers that were at high status, or achieving high status, uh, which are the cleanest of the rivers, the best of the best, uh, are closest to unimpacted natural conditions. They should not be allowed to degrade even down to good status. So those rivers have what we would call uh, a ob high status objective. Like the objective for that river is to maintain high status, whereas for another river, it might be to achieve good status. And all those rivers are covered by the Blue Dot Catchment Program, which is a program I work for as a Blue Dot Scientist. And you might wonder, what does high status mean? Well, for a river like this, High status would mean that it has a good diversity of very sensitive species of macroinvertebrates, as well as having quite low concentrations of pollutants and nutrients in particular. So that means it is in really good quality and that the water is clean enough that very sensitive species are able to survive. High status rivers are generally more diverse than other rivers and that the species that are there are sensitive to pollution. So you can get a lot of species living in a good status river uh, but in a high status river you would expect to get more of the very sensitive species and in more uh, in a greater abundance and your nutrient concentrations would be really really low and when we talk about high status and why it's important to a community well biodiversity has an intrinsic value it is valuable valuable to preserve the diversity that lives on our rivers and they but they do provide all our benefits to society and the communities that live within the river catchment and the river catchment is the area of land where the rain that falls on it feeds into a particular river. And so everyone in that catchment is connected to that river. And high status rivers and our blue dots provide benefits to the other rivers downstream of them. Quite often, uh, high status rivers are in the higher parts of the catchments, uh, often in the headwaters. And because they're so clean, they really help keep the water bodies below them clean because they are flowing down into the lower um, sections of the catchment. Most of the blue dots in Galway would be in the western side of the county. And so having an example of a high status uh, river, a blue dot river as well, in the eastern part of the county uh, is very important that we can try and preserve this. Because a river like this that is maintaining high status can serve as a location for biodiversity to be preserved in uh, a certain area. So animals that are, survive here are, because the water is so clean uh, can move into other rivers as they improve towards um, high and good status. So it's important in a, in a local area to have examples of high status uh, in these rivers. And this is quite um, a significant river, so there will be quite a lot of diversity living here. So our catchment scientists will walk the river looking for where impacts can move from the land 
into the river. And those can come from a variety of sources, um, agriculture, forestry operations, septic tanks, urban wastewater treatment. Uh, all of these can cause issues uh, for rivers. And our scientists will work with uh, landowners, with communities, with homeowners, uh, with uh, organizations that own wastewater treatment plants, such as Irish Water. If we identify an issue, we will work with the person that owns that collaboratively to find a solution to intercept any potential pollutants. Algae is a natural part of a river system and it forms the basis of the food web. The invertebrates feed on the algae, then the bigger invertebrates feed on those invertebrates and the fish feed on all the invertebrates. And so it is important. But when there are too many nutrients, the algae can get um, excessive. You can get very high coverages, which can cause problems for rivers. Um, it's probably the most common problem, actually, nutrients. Uh, trees on the river bank uh, also provide invertebrates to fish. It can be an important part of the diet of um, river fish in some areas, uh, the invertebrates that fall out of the trees. Um, so, you know, spiders and ants and whatever that fall off uh, overhanging canopies can become quite an important part of the diet for some trout and species. Another coarse fish as well, trout too. Uh, and the leaves form a very important part uh, for some of our invertebrate species that are shredding taxa that eat uh, leaves and plant material and um, fallen leaves in the autumn can be quite important to them. So it's useful to have trees. And from a particularly in a, a world where we're concerned about climate change, uh, shading from trees is important to help keep the maximum temperatures that rivers uh, get up to during the day, and particularly in weather like this. Uh, to try and keep the water temperature uh, just a little bit lower so that um, the fish are able to function. They don't like uh, when the temperature gets above um, you know, 20 odd degrees. Uh, they don't like that very much. So, ooh, that is Ephemera danica. This is a burrowing mayfly. It looks a bit like a, um, you know, one of the Chinese dragons. So the long ones, uh, maybe they're Japanese, but really cool. Very sensitive species. Very different to all the other mayflies. Quite big, so you would expect to find this species um, in sort of sediment that they can burrow into, uh, sometimes sandy areas. Passing the bridges at Trihill and Island Case leads us towards the special area of conservation and the wildfowl sanctuary of Mokina, heading towards the confluence of the river where it meets the River Suck. While the river, as previously mentioned, has currently a blue dot status, it is a river that needs our vigilance and protection as risks to this status increase. It was once a river noted for trout fishing. Locals swam in its waters but these activities are a rarity now. While global warming and climate change can at times seem distant and out of our control, this river in our midst is our responsibility and all our actions have the power to maintain its high status or lose it. In rural areas, depending on agriculture and forestry, it sometimes seems that protecting livelihoods is at odds with protecting our environment. But this environment is the only one we have, and we are not separate but a part of the natural world. As we have heard, from drinking water to land fertility, our lives are interdependent on river quality.
we end our journey with a view of the Shivan as it weaves and sculpts its way through the landscape to join the River Suck. Observing this magical river as the sun sets brings an optimism that a balance can be achieved where we can thrive and fulfil our potential without losing our precious habitats for present and future generations.